I'm gonna create some rain today. Hi guys and welcome back to new Photoshop tutorial. My name is Manny and today I'll be showing you guys how to do rain in Photoshop. Now I've got this very dark and moody image. Today I want to show you guys how I create with a few simple techniques just a little bit of rain on top of that image. Again we're going to work with some techniques, if some filter techniques, a little bit with a hidden mask and some brushes or basically with the brush and using that in different ways. So yeah, let's get started. Okay, so this is basically the already a finished product. As you guys can see here is the before and this is the after before and after. So I do want to show you guys now the whole process how I got to the rain. First of all obviously just remember you need to have an image that basically will have some clouds in here and that kind of look dark so as you guys can see with my image ready it looks very moody here with the clouds being very dark and dramatic and it looks like it's going to be raining or it's already raining. So it wasn't raining I actually I took this during the day and then changed everything so it looks at night and now I do want to add some rain. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, what I'm going to do is go down here and create again a new empty layer. I'm going to select my marking tool and just with Command A or Control A for Windows users, going to fill that all up and then we're going to press right click and say fill this with a complete black foreground color. So say use black over here, press OK, press Command D again and just remove that selection. And now next step that we're going to do is first of all add a filter to this. So in filter we're going to go to noise and we're going to say add noise over here. OK, so the add noise box is open. First of all, under my amount, I'm going to choose a roughly, yes, 108 or 110, somewhere around there, or even 105 say I'm just going to type it in here, 105% amount of noise. Then also with my distribution over here, I'm not going to go to uniform, it has to be Gaussian or Gaussian over here. And it obviously also have to have monochrome, otherwise you will have color in here as well. So I'm going to go with monochromatic, so it's just black and white, like a broken down TV. Okay, so then I'm going to hit OK, and first of all I have just this normal black layer here with all these dots in there. Then I'm going to go back to filter and now I do want to make a little bit of a distortion or actually a blur into here. So I'm going to say motion blur for that and we're going to now create a little bit of these falling down drops or the more the motion blur um, drops. Yeah, okay. Anyway, so my angle should be around I think about 80%. That also depends on my image now. As you guys can see, I'm just going to hit cancel again. As you guys can see, the guy is standing like this. So I do want the rain to be coming more or less from the side a little bit. Obviously, that also depends on your image from where your person is standing. Okay, so then again, I'm going to go back now and just enable that layer over here. I'm going to go back to filter and for that again, back to blur, gauge, no, motion blur. And in motion blur again, now obviously, like I said, so mine is around 78%. You could also have it like at 80% or something. I just would not go with 90% or something very straight on because it's obviously not raining. It's just not always just falling straight from the top. So maybe a little bit from the side, say something like that, 82%. I'm actually fine with that. Okay, now with my distance, I can actually play a little bit with that if you want a little bit less. But I definitely would recommend going up 100 and upwards. So say around 100, 19, 115, somewhere around there, that's good to me. We still have here at the top a little bit of this rim or this actually weird edge here because we're going to motion blur this now. So we would still need to transform and stretch that a little bit. Okay, I'm going to hit OK now and that will render. And next step that I'm going to do is again press Command T to just um, scale this a little bit. Okay, hold Shift for that and I'm just going to select a box here on the right hand side. So just transform evenly at the top, OK, and then I'm just going to move that a little bit in so we also lose the edge at the bottom. Say OK that, and that is accepted. And now we obviously have everything in a still grey form and we can't really see what's going on or where the rain is. So next step that I still want to do is I just want to give this a very edgy contrast as well. So obviously as you guys can see it's still grey and we can now just play with our blending options either under overlay or soft light but it doesn't really give us that effect that we after. So what I'm going to do is go back to normal and I'm going to create an adjustment layer and also a levels adjustment layer for that. Now as you guys can see here in our histogram I'm going to move all the black sliders all the way to the right and all the left sliders, the highlights, all the way to the left as well so it's getting very very white now, our rain. 
and then we're going to move our black parts again a little bit to the center so we're getting a very edgy white uh, rain over here. Also going to move the white highlighted sliders a little bit in again so we just boost those highlights a little bit the black ones a little bit again. Okay so now we do have more rain in a way as you guys can see this looks like rain or water is coming from the top. But now obviously this adjustment layer is applying to every layer down here so what I'm still going to say is hold alt and go between the layers that small arrow appears and I just can clip this layer now the levels adjustment layer to my gray layer or to make things even easier I could just say command hold both and just say right click and merge those layers quicker together so we have one solid layer again now what I'm going to do is also with my play with my blending options so I'm going to go to the blending options here and set that to screen that will basically now take away everything that is pure black and that will fade into transparent so you won't see black at all. Okay, so as you guys can see now we do have a lot of rain coming from the top and it looks very, like it looks just too much. So the next step that I'm still going to do, also if I zoom in you'll see that the rain is very very hard and rain is never hard like that so it's either just a little bit blurry. So what you're also going to do is go back to filter again on the same layer and we're going to say blur and we say Gaussian blur over here. And now I'm also going to just blur this so at a radius of 2.4 somewhere around there maybe one anything between 1.5 and 2 or 3 should be good enough. I think 2.6 is a little bit too much already so I'm going to go down to 2.4 again and just blur this a little bit going to hit the OK button here. So as you guys can see this is blurred now so I'm going to zoom out a little bit and obviously have this now as a full screen again and it looks just way too much, too much rain and too much going on. So we can obviously take our opacity down all the way and let that look a little bit fady but still it's not really giving me that effect of having just a little bit of rain coming down. So I'm going to boost up my opacity again and on this layer now I'm going to double click here onto the layer to get into my layer styles and under layer styles I'm going to move down here to blend if select my first slider hold alt and just take the dark sliders here from the left and move that a little bit over to the right so as you guys can see we are removing now the blacks even more okay and I'm going to take the other slider as well and do that as well so we're just getting a little bit of rain here okay a little bit back so that looks a patchier again. So we have a little certain areas with a lot of rain, a little bit of rain. Let's also play now with our highlight sliders here on the side. So those will just decrease as well a little bit. Not too much. Let's go back again. Obviously I don't want them too hard. We can also hold Alt again and just break that into sections again. That will just decrease and make that white a little bit more gray. I actually don't want that. Let's try the slider at the bottom as well. What effect will that give us? also just decrease that white again. Let's try the whites, the blacks actually down here, they actually suit a little bit already. So don't take the whole slider as you guys can see now that just fades completely away and looks weird. So what I'm going to do is again press Alt and just move that little slider as well and just remove that also a little bit so we're just killing a little bit more of those blacks again. Okay so then I'm going to say OK again and now we have a nice layer with just solid pure white highlighted areas coming down so which kind of looks like rain coming down. Now what I still want to do is take my opacity all the way down to say just around a 30% somewhere around there. Let's have a look what I used earlier. Also yeah somewhere 29% so this time it's a little bit more 39% so let's maybe go for 31%. Okay, so that kind of looks like there's rain coming now from the top and there is rain in our image. But obviously it's everywhere and it looks kind of fake still. So for my image it does suit a little bit that the rain is just coming from the right hand side at the 80% that we used earlier coming down. But sometimes your perspective is a little bit different than mine. So next step that I would do if my perspective were different I would go to edit transform and go to perspective and maybe just change my perspective a little bit and change the the way the rain would come down towards your image or wherever to your, towards your camera. So with you could also move these boxes left and right here and also hold shift if you want to to just distort that together and you could actually make that a little bit coming more from the side. I think this suits my image a little bit actually. So it's coming a little bit more from everywhere from the top going here into the center. Okay, so I'm going to say okay for that now. 
And then next step that I'm still going to do now, one of the last steps is just create a mask on this. So let's go down here to the mask, select a normal mask, and now with black foreground color and also with my brush, and now a 50% opacity here from the top. Let's select 50 over here, and I'm going to press Control Alt together just to feather my brush a little bit. So it's completely feathered my brush, and it's also going to make it a little bit smaller. I'm now going to patch a little bit in here because the rain is obviously not that consistent and just comes down in different patches. So I'm just going to destroy a little bit the rain here from the top as well. And that you obviously, we're obviously doing it now here on a mask. So with the white foreground color, we can always at 100% opacity, we can always paint it back if it looks too dodgy or if it looks just overdone. So over here, I do want to kill this a little bit. You can obviously, don't forget if you do the noise, you can stretch that a little bit as well. Okay, a little bit over here. And now also on him, I do want to paint this a little bit away on him here. It just doesn't suit him like, it's not everywhere. Even underneath of his arm, it's everywhere. So I'm going to go back to my brush again. And at 100% opacity, I'm just going to double tap zero here on my keyboard so we have 100% opacity. I'm also going to make my brush really small. And now just underneath here, just paint that out really nicely. Also a little bit on his jacket here, maybe one or two stripes, I'm going to leave that. On his hand, yes, definitely going to paint that out. I think it's just going to add a little bit more realness to this whole image. So paint that out here in the top, also here. Okay, and maybe on his chin here, let's take that out a bit, and on his face. Okay, you can maybe leave one or two drops in there, but most of them I would actually take out. Also down here, I'm going to leave those in here. I think they actually suited. But down here, I'm going to take these out a little bit. Okay, one or two. Then definitely on his hand here, it just it's way too much, I find. Okay, make my brush a little bit smaller. I'm working again with a Vacuum Continuous 4 board, so it's very easy for me to change my brush sizes via my wheel. Go check that out. I did a few tutorials on that, and it's also on the web how this tool works. It's pretty awesome and a very good retouching uh, tool if you retouch every day. Okay, now I'm going to go back with my opacity also say down to 30 or 28% and just brush a little bit here on his pants so it's not that extreme. Okay, on the shoes a little bit. Okay, patch that up a little bit and we're going to zoom out a little bit again. Zoom in a little bit, okay, and still over here and there. It's not that perfect yet as I had it before. I think I spent a little bit more time on this, as I said earlier, and I think also used a little bit better, more darks, or I actually had more darks in my histogram. So let's try that as well. I'm going to go back to adjustments again, back to levels adjustments over here, and just clip that to this layer. And also going to just try to make the blacks go even away a little bit more. So we're just like getting a less rain actually, so just a little bit. Okay, taking our white highlight sliders, don't take the center ones, take the outer ones. Okay, that's just creating a little bit more rain and pushing those highlights again. Okay, go back a little step. Yeah, yeah I could actually leave that as well, so I'm going to delete that layer and just go without it. So yeah, that's my quick tutorial today, showing you guys just a quick and easy way how to create a little bit of rain. Obviously this is looking a little bit patchy now still, I can still go back into my mask here and just patch out the sides a little bit, create a little bit of a vignetting effect around it. My color is already set, everything, but if your image does not have color yet, I would still add a little bit of a color cast to it. As well, there's a few techniques, I showed it already on my YouTube channel how I did that. So yeah, do have a look and yeah, that's basically it for today's tutorial. I hope you guys learned something from this quick tutorial today, how to make rain in Photoshop. Then as well, as if you have any questions, please leave them down below in the comment box. Then also give me a thumbs up if you like my content, share the stuff if you're keen and don't forget to subscribe. See you guys all in my next video and we're also going to have a little video about contest day from last week in this week. So see you then. Bye. Thank you.